Yeah. Let's just do questions. Yeah. Right. Let's get to it. All right, Coach, two weeks into camp, two scrimmages down. Where are you most pleased and maybe where do you want to see the most improvement for your team going forward? I think the, the, the answer is the same for both. Uh, it's the intentionality of the commitment to daily incremental improvement. And I think we've improved from a physical standpoint. Obviously, we still a work in process with that, but I think we've improved in those areas. But again, man, we've got a long way to go in a short time to get there because the sense of urgency with the, the game, it feels like the clock's spinning really fast right now. So we've got to continue to have a sense of urgency to incrementally improve every day. Ted, along those lines, when you look at the depth chart for the, for the season opener, I mean, yeah. have you guys, how far along are you? Where do you guys feel like you need to be? And where do you think you're going to maybe solidify it? Well, you know, I, I think we're in a, in, a, in a pretty good spot, but at the same time, there's still a lot of competition. Like, and that's good because competition is healthy and it makes everybody better. But, you know, there's still some decisions to be made. And, uh, you know, that, that's, why, that's why you practice so you can see guys, how guys are going to respond, you know. And as coaches, we've tried to make this, them and this and us as uncomfortable as we possibly can. And we want our guys to be comfortable in uncomfortable situations. And that's the mindset the, that we've, we've taken to try and expose them to that so that our attitude and our mindset is right. Because when that's right, everything else can align. But if that's not right, it doesn't matter. How's uh, Nigel Lee Kelly looking physically and how is he fitting within the scheme uh, on the defensive end? He's fitting in schematically well. He's a smart football player. Uh, but again, you know, the guys that were here last spring have a whole spring and you know, most of the summer leg up on him. But at the same time, I'm, I'm real pleased with him. He's very bright, he's intelligent, and uh, he's working hard to, to get better. And how's the shoulder looking? I know that's a big concern. Oh, he's fine. How would you evaluate your linebacker position? You got some experienced guys that transferred in, some younger guys. Who's kind of leading the way at that spot? Well, we've got, uh, we got several guys that are leading, and that's a good thing. Uh, you've got Ethan Barr, you've got Josiah Pierre, and you've got Deshaun Pace. And, you know, but those guys are the older guys. They've been around the block. Uh, they, and the thing is, they've all played a bunch of football, a bunch of college football, and uh, understand what it takes to, to win and win at a high level. And that's kind of – and also the things that, like, the experiences they, they've had throughout the course of their career because it, it hadn't been a bed of roses for any of them. But, you know, to understand how to navigate those tough times and how to respond to adversity. And, man, that's such a, that's such a critical piece to our development as a football team. You guys got an opportunity to use the tablets uh, in the scrimmage last weekend. How does that benefit you guys? And and you know, a lot of photos of you guys like sitting around in groups, look studying them. How does how does that like? How did it work for you? And how were you able to benefit from that? Let me start with this. Okay, I've always prided myself on a guy that could dissect something during game day and figure figure out what took place along with the rest of our staff and. Uh, <clears throat> Let me just say that we're still in the process of navigating those iPads, okay? We have a process that we go through, but in order to navigate it, they have to work. Okay, the iPads have to work. So we're still in the process of uh, <laughs> figuring that out. Uh, Brandon Adamson here a couple of days ago had mentioned that your uh, defensive players met and kind of shared their story, something you touched on last week. So how do you feel like the, the chemistry and the camaraderie is coming together after you know, maybe witnessing some of that. Well, that's an ongoing process that we do some of those every night, you know, because I want every – and uh, Coach Coach Malzahn wants every player to have their t opportunity to tell their story. And, you know, we've done that also defensively. But, you know, again, I, I talked about it the last time with the, the new era of college football, you know. It's not like this – you only have, like, 25 new guys, you know, per year in the old days where you signed 25 and that was it, you know. Now, you know, there's 50 new guys. There's 50, and that's, that's half your football team. And the race to connect, you know, the race to connect, I think what it does, it, when you understand and you know a guy's story, right, it brings, the, it brings that to another level. And I think when you do that, okay, you can respect that. You know, so can coach them harder, and they can respond better. And it's from teammate to teammate as well. Uh, so that, you know, you, you, there's, there's a connection. And that's a big deal in football because, you know, way back – you know, when, when this game was started, it was all about playing for each other and playing for your brother and fighting with him, you know. And, uh, and that's, that's what this game was founded on, you know, the, to be able to fight together. And, uh, you know, we've got to make sure that, that, with, that we adapt to the new age of college football so that piece doesn't get dismissed. That's a big piece, and, and we can't dismiss that or, or, or uh, 
take it for granted. We can't, can't take anything for granted. Uh, let's expand on that just a little bit. Yep. You talk about so many different people coming in, personalities are all different. What do you put in place off field and even on field to try and help gel that process much faster to get that buy-in and team camaraderie? Well, I, I think you established, because like you said, when you, when you it, this melting pot, right? You define the standard and, and you establish the standard, and then you hold people accountable to it. You know, we're held, as coaches, we're held accountable to it. And, and you know what, real guys, real guys, real players, they want to be held accountable too. And, uh, but in order to do that, you have to lay it out and communicate that clearly so they understand what that is, you know, what's acceptable and what's not. And then not only is the coaches holding each other accountable, but it's, it's players. And, you know, I, I've said this a bunch, and I think Coach Malzahn says, has said it a bunch as well. You know, the player-driven teams, the teams that, that I've been a part of where there were championships, they were player-driven, not coach-driven. Uh, and, you know, our guys are start continuing to buy in, and we've grown in that area. We're not anywhere where we need, close to where we need to be from that standpoint. But our guys are, tr are trying to do that, and there's growth. And, you know, the growth mindset as far as just getting better every day, man, is, and holding each other accountable. You know, us as coaches, coach to coach, player to coach, and. You know, so that that part of it is a, is a big deal. It's just because attitude, mindset, approach, mental approach is such a big part of this game that like people just see guys run out and make plays, and there's the, but there's so much more to it than that. That's just at a, a, a it's certainly important, but the, the the level of connection and belief and commitment to one another, that's that's a big deal. I would figure at this point you'd have a pretty good idea of the depth you have, you know, even if you haven't told the play. But is there a spot where there's still like an ongoing competition where maybe you really need to see this next scrimmage to come to a conclusion on who's going to be playing for you on Saturday? Well, there's several spots, and that's fantastic. There's several spots where there's still competition. You know, some of it may not just be a starting spot, but all right, who's going to who's going to be the second team guy? And then okay. All right, in, in accordance with that, okay, what special teams value does that guy bring? Because, you know, when you start getting, just like in the NFL, all right, the guys that are backups, man, they better have special teams value. So from a big team perspective, guys doing that, so there's a lot of battles still going on at a lot of different levels. Ted, the NCAA has allowed analysts now to be on the field to, to help you guys coaching, coaching them. How much of a help is that to have additional guys who've got experience on the field around you that can help, you know, maybe take position groups and stuff like that. Yeah, it's great. You know, it's, it's fantastic. Uh, you know, because those guys had to sit there and watch practice and start before the rule changed. And, uh, you know, now now they can coach. And it certainly helps you because now you have an extra set of eyes and not, not just a set of eyes that can't say anything, but a set of eyes that can talk. Because, you know, before they changed the rule, you had the eyes, but they couldn't speak. They couldn't correct. And uh, and now now you can. So. Uh, it's, it's been better, you know. It's been it's it's better from a, an efficiency standpoint. More than halfway through practices now. Where, where do you feel like you, you know? What are the main points of emphasis as you get ready for the third scrimmage? And where do you feel like you know on a day to day basis you guys have kind of improved the most? On a day to day basis, I think they've done a good job of picking up the scheme. Okay, but as far as the the, the number one area of emphasis is execution. You know that the, to be able to execute. Whatever, whatever we call, because at this point, we have a pretty good feel of who we are and what we can do really well. So it's my job to make sure that I'm putting guys in that position to do that, but then their job is to execute it. You know, that we're, we're limiting the busts and the, <coughs> the, the busts so guys can play fast. Because so many times, right, guys, when they, when they can see the game, when their eyes see the game, the game slows down. And then, then the ability and instincts and aggressiveness can take over as opposed to trying to figure out what, what to do. And it just lets guys go play, you know, instinctively. And uh, we're, getting to, we're getting to that point where we've melted things down. And at the same time, man, the execution piece is huge. You talked about the tablets, but also the helmet communication. And we've talked to you before about that. Is How's that coming along? Are you seeing where that's a real benefit, like a scrimmage situation? I'm sure you're the guy on the microphone, right? Correct. You're the guy yes. Talking. Is it, yes. Is it maybe a Mike linebacker? Is that who's who's kind of your your player? Yeah, it, it changes from uh, series to series at times, but yeah, it is. And here's here's as a coach on talking into this player's ear. Okay, you've got to say enough to give him, you know, to give him some some heads up. But at the same time, you don't want to say too much. Right. You know where. There's a fine balance there where it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a coaching point or two or it's an awareness from formation recognition standpoint, and then that's it. Because then he's got to have time 
to process because with the tempo, right, your pre-snap process is cut down. You know, in, in the days when everybody huddled, you know, people stepped away, they saw the formation, they made the checks, whatever. Now, that whole, that, that whole time where you had to process all that is shrunk. And to be able to do that, and at the same time to, to, to be a guy that, that, that adds value into, in what they're thinking, what they're seeing, what could possibly happen, and not bog them down with too much verbiage. Yeah, have the players done a good job, whoever's had the device in their helmet, have they kind of figured it out and kind of learned how to take it and kind of make direction to their teammates? Has that been a good Yeah, that's been, that's been really good. Yeah, that's been, that's been really good. Coach, yes, sir. First game two weeks from tomorrow, when do you start from a timeline standpoint trickling in your first opponent if you have an argument? Okay, well, good question. And we're going to start that next week. Uh, we'll get a couple extra days on them, so we'll start that that next week. And, and, you know, this will be our first time, you know, game planning as a staff together, you know, because everybody's have certain responsibilities within the game plan. Is the diff each coach has a different area uh, to be able to, to game plan and present ideas. And then we come together and, and make the final decision. So, but that'll start, that'll start next week. Time for a couple more. Uh, yeah, Josiah mentioned tempo yesterday. It's kind of like one of the things that stood out about the offense playing against it every day. You were talking about the speed of the game. How much is playing against your, your, your team's offense helping with that acceleration process from a mental standpoint? Oh, it's, it's, it's good stuff because here's what, here's what doesn't happen, all right? When you go week to week, right, and the offensive scheme changes during the course of the year, one team runs this, the next week's team runs that, okay? There's certain things that the scout team can execute, but the tempo that our, our offense runs at is not one of them. So from our standpoint, from a defensive standpoint, that is good that we experience that the, because, again, the accelerated communication process, the accelerated alignment process, all the things that go with that. So that's, that's helped a lot. Well, what are some things you can do as far as getting ready for the area of offense to keep the guys in shape and also manage like substitution and getting the right guys in for the right fit and not kind of get caught and not having the wrong people in at the wrong time? Yeah, I mean, you know, that's, that's a good question. But what you do is there's certain times that, that you can sub, there's certain situations based on, you know, what happens at the end of the play, what happens, are they, are they subbing, where's the ball in relationship to your bench, you know, all those, all those types of things. So that whole, the whole mechanics of doing that, and at the same time, for those guys that are in the game to keep fighting in condition, you know, and that, that helps that as well. Excuse me, where if, you, if your practice is structured where, let's say, it's five or six reps per group, then the next group comes out for five or six, and the next group comes out five or six. Well, now you get stuck and you're out there eight, 10, 12 plays, okay? That forces you to condition because you can't, you can't get on and off. So that's something that, uh, that you know, that we, we have a process in, in place for that when we sub, when, when we can't. And, uh, you know, so that way on game day, there are no surprises. All right, thanks everybody. All right, appreciate it.